Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, and we're doing another Swiss pre-release Dragons of Tarkir draft. And um, they renamed the Swiss drafts Pack Per Win. And also another surprising thing is they uh, let you buy in with the the packs rather than the... Usually the pre-release, it costs you 15 tickets, but it seems like they updated it so you can use the Dragons packs and the Fate Reforged packs, which I like means it's going to be cheaper. All right, well, we got Hidden Dragon Slayer once again. And uh, I got wrecked by this card uh, a couple drafts ago, and then I got to wreck somebody with it uh, in the last draft. So, very good card. Uh, what else we got in here that's interesting? I, I should learn all these cards. Uh, yeah, this one's okay. A little sacrifice, instant speed sacrifice effect. Never hurt nobody. Uh, Stormrider Rig. I don't know how much I like this yet. It's probably pretty good in a little aggro deck. Um, a couple other little beaters, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and slam the Hidden Dragon Slayer. Okay, follow-up pick. Well, they got Profaner of the Dead Rare, so it's got Exploit, and when you exploit a creature, return to their owner's hands all creatures your opponents control with toughness less. That seems really good, doesn't it? Exploit a creature and then bounce everything. Of your opponents, all your opponent's creatures with, with toughness less. That seems really good. I think I want to take this guy. Uh, ooh, there's Ojitai Summons in here too. But uh, Profaner of the Dead takes care of those tokens. Uh, that's actually tough because I'm, I'm passing good blue cards. But this is, I mean, that's this is a rare. And that's a pretty strong ability, I feel like, right? I mean, you sacrifice himself, you bounce all three toughness or less creatures your opponents control. I could see that coming in handy quite a bit. I'm going to take it. I definitely think there's high power level to this card, so I'm going to try it out. Okay. Uh, what have we got now? Uh, cards that are on color with the two we already have are the champion... Mist uh, Hoof Kirin and Mystic Meditation. We have this Vultress Avon in black, which I think is very good. Very good card. Um, nothing else like super interesting in here. I like the monuments. Pretty tempted to just take the Mist Hoof Kirin. I think this card's good. You Megamorph it, you end up paying about five mana over two turns or one turn. And you end up with a 3-2 Flying Vigilance. I mean, that's pretty good. It's really not bad. Yeah, I think it's less powerful than Vulture Haven, But it's uh, it keeps my Hidden Dragon Slayer... Keeps me in the Hidden Dragon Slayer zone. So I kind of like it. I'm going to take it. Okay. Uh, I've got Carsey Deceiver, which... To be honest, kind of works well with all three of our cards, but what's this Hedonist Trove? Exile all... Oh, yeah, that's right. This card's pretty interesting. I actually think this card's probably playable, but I think I'm a little more interested in the Enduring Victory, um, which I think is better than the Carsey Deceiver, too. It's just removal. Good removal at that. What's the Sight of the Scale Lords do? Five mana. You can even comment on your turn. Toughness four greater creatures get... That seems really good. I like that card. I think the only issue with it in our deck, of course, is we currently have three creatures, none of which have toughness four or greater. But I could see this card being good in uh, certain decks, of course. But let's take the Enduring Victory. Okay. Now we have the Light Walker, which is on color. It's going to work well with the Enduring Victory. And to be honest, I... I I had a good experience with this card. I liked it. Uh, the blue cards in here, not so impressive. Some pretty decent green cards. So it could be the Profaner is either splashed or not played. Um, although it seems like a very splashable card. Um, I think I'm just going to take Lightwalker. Stay with our white plan. Um, I mean, I think these cards are actually pretty good. I Actually, I don't know how I feel. I don't really like Circle of Elders all that much. But... Segmented Crotique and Tread Upon, I think, are, are certainly fine cards. And Defeat is a pretty good card, but I'm, I'm happy taking Lightwalker here on color. Very playable. Okay. 
Now there's, what's Enduring Scale Lord do? Six mana, four, four. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's okay. I, I don't know. Uh, it does seem like green is kind of open, so maybe I just take it. I mean, it is a pretty big flyer. Otherwise, I'm taking a two drop, which isn't even that exciting. I mean, it does give uh, vigilance to my hidden dragon slayer and light walker, but... Um, It does seem like green's open. It does. I think I'm going to take this Scale Lord. This guy's, he's a big old dragon. So why not? He's not insane, but big flyers are usually pretty good. Okay, now we have uh, in green, we have some good green and white picks here. We also have Vial of Dragonfire, which is pretty good. I think I like the, I like the Guardian Shield Bearer's Synergy with Enduring Scale Lord. Um, I mean, granted, you have to, well, it also works with the Light Walker, so it's just all around, I think, the right pick. I do like Glaring Aegis. I played against it, and I was pretty impressed with how strong it can be. Um, Dragon's Eye Sentry seems more like a sideboard card against Omega Aggro decks. And Conifer Strider's fine, but let's take the value uh, Morph Dude. Okay, Servant to the Scale, I think, is actually exactly what we want. I like Center Soul, too, because it protects from removal. But Servant to the Scale seems, like, perfect for this deck, because it gives counters, um, which is going to synergize well with both Lightwalker and Enduring Scale Lord, and it's a cheap, it's like a cheap threat. You make it bigger, and then those counters get to move over onto other stuff. I like it. I actually really like this card. Uh, there is a Sidisi's Faithful, which I think is a good card, too. And like I said, I actually like Center Soul, but I'm going to take this Servant to the Scale. I've got, like, a kind of good feeling about it. All right, well, immediately rewarded with uh, another Center Soul, so I think we take it here. And otherwise, it's a Storm Rider Rig, which I think is fine, but it's not terribly exciting. And Center Soul is some pretty good protection, so I'll take it. All right, Artillerist I like. Even more synergy with our, our plus one, plus one counter card. So I can totally get behind this. I think we're in the right colors. I'll tell you that much. I am feeling very comfortable in the colors we're in. So how do I feel about Custodian of the Trove? I don't think it's that great, but it does synergize pretty well with this Profaner of the Dead. If I can still make this work. But um, I think I'll find a Naturalize effect later. I'm going to take this Custodian. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but... Seems okay. All right. Sided Scale Lord's currently working well with what? I guess not that much, is it? Really, it's just working with our Enduring Scale Lord, but whatever. I mean, otherwise, I'm taking a Resupply, I guess, which is an okay card. But I'm, I'm going to take the Sided Scale Lord's anyway. If I get enough plus one, plus one counter cards, it might actually potentially possibly make the deck. All right. I think we just hate this Rending Volley because it's pretty good against us. Artillerist this late is pretty fantastic. Three mana, four ones are nothing to scoff at, and having an additional ability on top of that is pretty nice. Granted, neither of these synergize well with Sight of the Scale Lords or Profaner of the Dead, but I don't think that's a major issue. I'm much more interested in, currently, just based on the cards we have, I'm much more inter interested in uh, some cool synergies with this with the plus one, plus one counters. Oh, wow. Well, Dramoka Captain is cool. What's the myth realized, dude? Okay. Cast a non-creature spell, put a lore counter on it. It, uh, oh, that's right. I think this card's good. Currently, we have a rebound effect here, so that's going to be two for that. So one, two, three, and we're probably not playing this. That's really not that much. I was kind of expecting some more, to be honest. Um, maybe we want the Echoes of the Kin Tree. This seems like a card that's going to synergize real well with Servant, Light Walker, um, Double Artillerist, and the Scale Lord. I'm pretty tempted to take this Echoes of the Kin Tree. I like Dromoka Captain too, but I feel like it's going to be less good. I'm actually unsure on that, but I feel like Echoes of the Kin Tree is what I'm looking for. I think Myth Realize actually is a fine card. But this doesn't strike me as the deck for it, so I'm going to take the Echoes of the Kin Tree instead. 
Um, all right, now we just get a Pacifism. I think we just want to slam that. Pacifism's a great card. Granted, it's not very good against the exploit decks. Um, but we're a little bit short on removal. And by a little bit, I mean we have no removal. I guess we do have Hidden Dragon Slayer. Uh, but that's not much. Oh, and Derive Victory, too. All right, so we only have two removal spells, but which isn't bad. But still, Pacifism's a great card. And like I said, even though it's kind of gives them exploit fodder, I still think that... I still can justify playing Pacifism for sure. I like it a lot. Pacifism's a great card. Um, this guy's pretty good for dash decks, huh? I like the Tactician as well. And Guardian Shield Bearer. But green seems pretty open in pack one, so maybe we table some good cards. You never know. Okay, I like Cyan of Ugin. Usually can get behind that. Pinion Feast, fantastic sideboard card. But I think we're going to take Big Flying Dragon. We don't have many auras, I don't think. Maybe none for the uh, Grace Blade Artisan. I actually like Artful Maneuver quite a bit. That's played well for me. But uh, we're just going to take Cyan of Ugin. Six mana, four, four flyers. Certainly solid enough. All right. I like this Lurking Erinx. Definitely. I do like that card. Otherwise, Sandstorm Charger is fine. Here's a Ojitai Summons. For the old blue deck, which is pretty good. Self-inflicted wounds going to be pretty good against us. It's good against both our colors, but certainly not going to be hate picking here. Uh oh, my cats are freaking out. Jesus. Whoa. One sec. All right, so we're going to take the airings because I like this card. I hope that was the best pick. I got distracted. My cats were freaking out at each other. I don't know why. Okay. Um, so what do we got now? I got this Dragon Scarred Bear. This guy seems okay. Nothing special, but certainly not terrible. Otherwise, we take a Dromoka Warrior. Um, which I might actually want instead. It's more aggressive. I feel like we can make a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid little green-white beatdown deck. I mean, Sheltered Airy is okay. I feel like it goes late. It does fix for Profaner of the Dead, but I don't need to play Profaner in this deck either. So, Bear versus Dromoka Warrior. I mean, granted, a 3-2 a with Regenerate is pretty good. But I'm trying to think. I think I want the, I think I want the cheaper beater. I'm going to take the cheaper beater here. I don't know if it's right. We'll find out. Okay. So, now I've got the option to take Evolving Wilds to splash for the Profaner. Uh, the issue is I really like the Sandcrafter Mage and I like the Avon Tactician. Because the Sandcrafter Mage... If we get to go Sub Servant or Lightwalker into Sandcrafter Mage, we're doing really good. Um, let's cut the Sight of the Scale Lords now, because I don't think that's happening. And then I really have to think about this Evolving Wilds. Um, I probably cut the Custodian of the Trove too, even if I do play Profaner. This is tough, man. I'm going to take the Mage because it feels like I can be pretty aggressive here. And even though the Tactician has flying, I really, for some reason, this Mage to me seems really good. I like how, I like what it allows us to, how it allows us to curve. Because even, look at this, our 1, 2, 3 curve into a Sandcrafter Mage, all of those are pretty amazing. What's this Orator do again? I can reveal a dragon and draw a card. And get a 2-mana 0-4 Defender Flying. I mean, it's nothing special. Gate Smasher seems like a card that's going to synergize well with Sight of the Scale Lords. But this isn't quite the deck for that. I've got a lot of creatures. I'm, I think I'm just going to take this Artful Maneuver. I actually like Bowmasters too. But the reason I like... Uh, I guess the Megamorph guys do get the plus 1, plus 1 counters. This is an amazing... This is just a gift. This card is incredible. This makes that Artful Maneuver pick seem... So much better, by the way. Um, but yeah, we're, we're slamming so hard. We're slamming this strong arm monk. I like the pinion feast, but uh, no way, Jose. We got to take that card. We table the myth realized. That's kind of funny. Um, how many cards do we have total for it? One, two, three, four. Four is, seems so low. And even though it can put counters on itself... I think I'd rather just have a Tactician here. 
I like Beast Breaker too, but let's let's stick with this uh, plus one plus one counter strategy. I'm I'm kind of digging this. All right, we finally miss. Um, so I think we take the best card, which is the Flatten. It's a pretty good removal spell. Um, we'll take the Pinion Feast, I think, for sideboard. I already have a Fate Forgotten, I believe, right? Or did I not get one? I guess I didn't. Um, I think I'd still rather have Pinion Feast for sideboard. Kills the dragons all day, boosts your guys. It's pretty strong. Honestly, you could probably main deck Pinion Feast. All right, Ojitai Summon should never go this late. Um, I'm just going to hate it because I don't think I'm going to need to shape the, slant, uh, shape the sands. But yeah, we're definitely going to hate uh, Ojitai Summons because it really shouldn't go that late. It's a pretty incredible card. Uh, I don't care about a 4-mana 1-6, so I guess we'll take Duress. And Dance of the Skywise seems like it's a reasonably playable card. I guess we'll take that. Okay, so we already have a pretty good-looking deck. I think there's pretty low chance that we're splashing Profaner of the Dead. Given that I picked the Sandcrafter Mage over the fixing for Profaner. Gee, Silumgar. Silumgar's a card, all right. Um, I think we're just slamming Sandblast. I like removal. And we're doing real good on our creature count. So let's just take this Sandblast. Okay, so we have a Soul Summons, which is a nice cheap beater. Um, I guess Inoc Guide technically is a way to play their Profaner of the Dead. Uh, but Map the Waste does it too, and I guess fits in a little bit better with our plus one, plus one counter theme. Oh, I guess Inoc Guide sort of does too, but, um, that only synergizes, I guess, with the Enduring Scale Lord. Um... I don't know if... I feel like Profaner of the Dead is good enough to be splashed, but it's like... I don't know how much I'm feeling it. I mean, like I said, I can splash it. Do I want to splash it? Maybe. I mean, it is a powerful effect. It is a powerful effect. I do have to give it credit for that. I think we're going to take the guide. Not a terribly exciting second pick, granted. But I like it more than the Soul Summons in our deck because of the plus one, plus one counter and the fact that I could still fix for Profaner. All right, I'll do it. Oh, I got to move stuff over. Stuff got moved. Stuff got moved on me here. Uh, Light Form's an incredibly strong card. Um, yeah, we're just going to slam that, especially in a deck that gives all these plus one, plus one counters. Granted, we're passing a Mob Rule, which I have had some pretty insane experiences with. Um, but that's okay. This looks like a 17 land deck too, so... Let's just take the light form. You imagine if I flip, I don't know, a dragon or something underneath it. It would be pretty nice. All right, so now the only things we're picking are things we're, we're going to make cuts for, I guess. So what's the easiest cut in this deck? I actually like every single card in this deck, to be honest. Um, the weakest card might be Center Soul main deck. If we play against a creature or a removal heavy deck, I could bring it in. And I don't know what I would play over it, though. Maybe a uh, pressure point for tempo and card draw or soul summons as just another card that activates strong art monk and, and nets me a creature. That could be the right one, actually. But I might actually play center soul over soul summons in this deck, too. Not exactly sure. I think I'm just going to take the Soul Summons regardless. And if I want to cut something for it, I might. Okay, now we have uh, Formless Nurturing. We do have Thornwood Falls, which makes the Profaner at this point pretty playable. I think the thing is I already have enough playables in my deck, so I really don't need to nab anything here. Like Mardu Woe Reaper is good, certainly. And it's allowing a, it would allow us to play more beatdown, but... I feel like taking the Thornwood Falls is fine. I, I take Thornwood Falls and I play one island. And between that and Inoc Guide, that's more than enough to make the Profaner work, I think. And I'm only I'm passing up on a Woe Reaper, which I guess is pretty good. It's a pretty efficient beater. Um, but I don't think I need to cut anything necessarily for it. I'm just going to take the land. That makes our Profaner more playable. I'm, I'm going to splash this Profaner. Maybe I'm crazy for doing it, but I don't feel crazy doing it. All right, get a Woe Reaper anyway, so we'll take it. Despite, uh, although, 
I got to admit, Battlefront Crew Shock with our plus one, plus one counter theme doesn't seem terrible. But it's just your guys can't be multi-blocked. I mean, it's not that powerful of an ability. I'd rather play just a, a cheap beater. I could take another uh, Inoc Guide, which still fits in with our plus one, plus one counter theme and gives us yet another way to find our, our blue mana. It's not terrible. Um, I can lower the curve of this deck too, which is pretty incredible. I think I'm going to take the second guide. I don't know if I'm playing it yet. Um, nothing super special here. I guess we'll take Formless Nurturing. Kind of low in the four drop department, I suppose. All right, Sky Captain seems great for us, I think. Yeah, I think Sky Captain's what we're looking for. More of the plus one, plus one counter theme. Otherwise, Erish and Cleric, but we I don't think we need the Cleric. We're, we're, we can at least keep pace with opposing aggressive decks. So let's take the Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. Um, terrible movie from what I've heard. Let's see here. What am I hating? I guess I can take Archers for sideboard. I don't really need it. Um, our deck's great, by the way. I really like our deck. I think I hate a Cunning Strike. Seems like the best card. And, uh, hmm. None of these seem all that important. I think Fierce Invocation might be the best of those. Winds of Calcisma. I mean, we do have double Inoc Artillerist. Could possibly work. Why not? Another formless nurturing, more of this plus one, plus one counter business. I could probably get behind that. Otherwise, I'm taking enhanced awareness. But let's take the nurturing, I guess. Uh, sure, skirmisher, whatever. Last pick, friendly fire. Makes sense. Random effects, not too popular. All right, so we have a fantastic looking deck. Very strong. I have to make cuts. Uh, I don't know exactly what the cuts are yet either, which is uh, a good problem to have. And I still am going to splash for uh, Profaner. I like it. I really like what that card does. I think it's a really strong ability. Uh, so let's not cut any of our Megamorph guys. Certainly not. Uh, 18 creatures is a pretty solid creature count. And I guess it's like 20 if you count the Formless Nurturing, which probably should. Man, I don't even know what to cut. Everything looks great. Everything looks really great. There's not a single card in here I'm unhappy with. Um, and Light Forms a Creature too? Alright, I think I'm cutting the Formless Nurturings just because they seem like an easy cut. They're like hill giants most of the time. And yes, I understand that they work well with both Strong Arm Monk and uh, Enduring Scale Lord. Do they enter with the counter? No. So it would actually trigger Enduring Scale Lord, granted. But I feel like our deck has plenty of ways to trigger Enduring Scale Lord. Uh, plenty, plenty of ways. Okay, so I'm not cutting any of my removal or tricks, I don't think, at this point. And I want to try this Echoes of the Kin Tree, because I think this card's really good. It's an awesome mana sink. So I think I want to play 17 lands. I probably could get away with 16, but I don't really see a strong incentive to do that. I do have double Inoc Guide, I suppose, which kind of helps with that. Otherwise, they're just Grizzly Bears. Hmm, that's kind of interesting, actually. That means if I just get to two mana, I can at least play it and find my third land. But I guess we have enough top end. And we're playing a third. We're splashing for a third color. Okay. I think I'll run 17. I think I'm pretty tempted to cut the center soul main deck. I know it's another card that works well with Strong Arm Monk. Really well, actually. But I feel like I want the more aggressive Artful Maneuver. I can like, I think these are interchangeable actually. 
Like, I play against a heavier removal deck. I swap the Artful Maneuver for Sinner Soul. Um, and main deck, I'll be prepared more for decks that don't have a ton of removal. So then it's just like a nice combat trick that also beats down well. That sounds correct to me. So we have 19 creatures currently. It feels like we should cut a creature and leave all of these spells. So there's at least... Because with Lightform, we have only six things that activate Strongarm Monk, which isn't a ton. But you don't need to activate Strongarm Monk more than I would expect one or two times in a deck this heavy with creatures to really just take somebody out. Um, so I should cut a creature. And I'm really having a hard time deciding which one. I like them all. I really like them all a lot. It could be the Servant. I I understand the issue with cutting the Servant too. Because it does synergize well with Echoes or uh, Echoes of the Kintry uh, and uh, Sandcrafter Mage and Tactician. I mean, you don't get to split the counters, but that's still a pretty strong ability that I like. Especially with Enduring Scale Lord out, that would be pretty. That would be pretty cool, actually. Oh, whenever one or more. So even if you put like three on one creature, you'd only get one counter. All right. Still a good card. So, I, I mean, I like this deck. This is a good looking deck. It really is. Our removal is Pacifism, Sandblast, Enduring Victory, and uh, Dragon Slayer. That's pretty good. We have 19 creatures. So it really does feel like we should just cut a creature, but I'm having a really tough time deciding which one. It might be the Inoc Guide. Two of them probably seems a little bit overkill. And my three-drop creatures just seem excellent. Like, I really don't want to cut an Artillerist. I feel like it's just really good in this deck. Because it's a nice beater. But, may I mean, I maybe I cut an Artillerist and keep the guide. Hmm. Doing a, getting a artillery under a light form would be pretty nice though. Pretty nice. Hmm. I feel like guide is likely worse than artillerist, but curve wise, might make more sense to keep the guide. And for the fixing, and the plus one plus one counter synergy with Scale Lord. It's tough. It is tough. At the same time, bolstering this guy with like echoes is pretty insane. Can turn him into a huge beater pretty quick. And him having reach is like pretty nice actually. I still want to keep this guy. I feel like we can get formidable, and then this guy just eats dudes all day. I don't want to cut Scion of Ugin or Enduring Scale Lord. I want to keep all those. I still like the Monk, even though we only have six six cards that activate it. It's a strong enough effect where I want it. I could even see running Soul Summons to get additional strong arm Monk value. I'm not even opposed to that. But... Since we have to make a cut, I'm feeling either an Artillerist. I think the ones that are on the fence are the Artillerist or the Inoc Guide. And I think I would like to have four two drops. So I'm a little more tempted to cut the Artillerist. But Artillerist blocks better with four power. That trades up, I feel like, really well. I'm going to cut the Artillerist. I... I'm not thrilled about it, but I like making Profaner pretty easy to play in this deck. And I do want to try this card out, because I think it's sacrificing itself to bounce all three toughness creatures or less. You could pretty much bounce your opponent's board, I feel like. Not often, but the fact that it it can is pretty sweet. Um, or is it not worth splashing? I don't know. I mean, I don't have a ton of high toughness guys, admittedly. It seems like it's unlikely we're ever going to get more than three 
But even three, three is like a pretty solid number. Bouncing all your opponent's creatures. Even if you're not hitting all of your opponent's creatures, just hitting like, you know, two thirds of them is pretty insane. All right, I'm going to try this card out. I've just got a, I've got a crazy feeling about it. So I think the rest of the mana, I guess I should sort by color here. Mostly white and then green. Okay. So one island is correct. And then we'll do, uh, this is seven green. I need double white for light form. But, yeah, I think nine, seven with the, uh, with the Thornwood Falls. Seven should be enough to see, to see green, I think. Okay. So, I think I'm going to run it like this. Overall, I do like this deck. Yeah, I really like this deck. It's a pretty cool looking deck. I think it's a nice, uh, aggressive little, uh, green-white build. So, very curious to see what this deck can do and uh, kind of excited to try out Profaner of the Dead. So we'll see how it goes. See you round one.